Howdy folks, Jamboreeki here. Chicken Little is often considered one of the worst Disney animated films ever, but is it really that bad? Well, let's crack this egg and find out. Chicken Little often suffers from bad luck, parental disappointment and bullying, but when he bats a home run, he suddenly makes his father and town very proud. All that changes when Chicken and his friends discover signs of an alien invasion. Nobody believes him though, not even his own dad. Can Chicken and his friends prove that extraterrestrial life is coming to the town of Oaky Oaks? Based on the negative reception to this movie, I was expecting it to be an overwhelming disaster with nothing redeemable, but in all honesty, this movie was a passable and watchable experience for me. Sure, it's got plenty of problems, but I wouldn't say it made me furiously angry. Let's first discuss the film's biggest complaint that it's received, its mean-spirited nature. You see, the town of Oaky Oaks is brutally harsh to Chicken Little and his friends. The other children mock them, the teachers are unprofessionally cruel to them, and the townspeople are melodramatically vicious people that relish in publicly shaming a child. Plus, Chicken Little's father openly expresses embarrassment of his son and cares more about his public perception than Chicken Little's dignity. The decision to surround our heroes with harsh, cruel people is clearly a lazy way of gaining audience sympathy. It just ends up making the setting seem unrealistically over the top and turns most of the supporting cast into unlikable assholes. However, while this is a major problem with the film, it is not the first time I've seen a movie make this mistake. Rudolph the movie also had cruel townspeople and an awful father character, so I was less shocked by Chicken Little doing the same thing. It's not exactly a remarkable or new problem for a movie to me. Secondly, the movie also suffers from being painfully unfunny. The problem is in the execution. Every gag is overdone and obnoxiously fast-paced. There's a lack of restraint or timing, and most of the jokes are played out while something important is happening, which is really distracting. Also, too much of the humour relies on the idea that these are animals doing human activities, a joke that's been done to death, and one that's been done much better in Fantastic Mr. Fox because the characters were established as serious and dry, making their feral behaviour noticeably funny. Here, the anthropomorphic characters act like animals and don't show embarrassment or confusion for doing so. It's not exactly funny if this behaviour is casual for the characters. However, to be honest, I do think that the film deserves a little praise for a couple of things. Like, I do feel a sense of camaraderie between Chicken Little and his friends. This ragtag group of outcasts find solace in one another, enjoy each other's company and do genuinely want to support each other. Despite the cruelty around them, they have managed to get along and express genuine friendship. I also love the way the film pulls off the sci-fi aspect of its story. The aliens themselves are actually legitimately scary. They pose a genuine threat. They have Geiger-esque cyberpunk designs. Their presence is intimidating. The atmosphere on their ship is haunting. And I love the unique hexagon theme for their technology. It's strikingly thematic and visually interesting. Yes, the aliens are much less scary once we find out the truth, but until then, there's something excitingly mysterious and spooky about them that drew me into the film. I'm going to give three points to the content. Chicken Little constantly deals with bad luck and public cruelty, but he has an admirable determination and instinct. If there's a problem in his way, he'll immediately adapt to the situation with clever invention. It's very inspiring. But Cluck is an awful father because he puts his public image and reputation before his son. Sure, invading aliens is a far-fetched claim, but even if Chicken is fibbing, Buck should address why his son is making these things up. It's one thing to not support your kid's wild statements, it's something else to completely ignore a possible psychological problem. Sure, Buck does eventually apologise to Chicken Little for his bad parenting, but this apology feels very insincere because Buck never indicates a genuine concern or love for his son deep down. He spends the whole movie trying to cover his own ass or shaming his son. It's more like a complete 180 for his character than good development. Abby is bullied for her looks, but takes it in her stride. We learn that she's a very intelligent and caring girl. She looks out for poor Chicken Little and gives him sensible advice about addressing the tension with his father. She does hint a crush on Chicken too, and it is taken somewhere, but it's a very rushed and clunky romance. 
I mean, when Chicken confesses his attraction to Abby, it comes out of nowhere. Runt is a walking fat joke, let's not beat around the bush, he is, he's just there to fit a typical plus size comedic relief role. He doesn't even say or do anything remarkably funny, but his love for disco music adds a charming flamboyancy to his personality. Fish Out of Water is my least favourite friend of Chicken Little's. He spends most of the movie goofing around at the side. His silliness is often a distraction because he's always trying to be funny while we're supposed to be focused on something important, like a serious conversation. I guess some people will find him funny and cute, but I just found him annoying. I'm going to give two points to the characters. This is certainly one of the weakest looking Disney films I've seen. Sure, the aliens look cool, plus Chicken and his friends have quirky, cute designs, but everyone else looks like stock anthropomorphic characters. They all look so generic and plain. It's as if they only went through one draft of design and nothing was experimented with further. The carrot animation is also pretty lackluster. There's not much personality behind the acting. Expressions and actions like imagination or charm. That distinct Disney magic isn't there, and this heavily affects the movie's attempts to be both funny and emotional, because the animation is missing the principles of character acting. There's no sense of timing, soul, wit, or pacing. I'm going to give one point to the animation. Zach Braff from TV Scrubs has a knack for being adorably nerdy in his performances, which is highly suitable for a fluffy social outcast like Chicken Little. Woo! Good morning. I had a run in with my old nemesis. Scum in the crosswalk. He won this round. Your old foe. Mm hmm. Incoming on your right! <laughs> Filmmaker and sitcom creator Gary Marshall voices Buck Cluck. His gruff voice definitely fits the middle-aged design and rough personality of Buck Cluck. Here's the wind-up! And the pitch! It's a knuckleball right down the middle! He swings! Crack! It's going! He rounds first, then on to second! And it's high off the wall! He flies past third and heads for the plate! It's a match scramble for the ball! There's the throw! Hope it's gonna be close! He is safe! <laughs> Joan Cusack's nasally voice really fits well with Abby. It helps to create a likeable, dorky charm for the character. I'm sure there's a simple, logical explanation. I mean, it could be a piece of weather balloon. Or maybe it's part of some experimental communication satellite. Steve Zahn is unrecognizable as the voice of Runt. He puts a lot of nervous energy into the easily agitated pig. Fish. 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 Oh, where are you, fish? <gasps> I can't get out of the pressure. Go on without me. Runt. Oh. Just, holy jeopardize the mission. Dangerous all. Throw me overboard while you still have a chance. I'm going to give four points to the voice acting. Much like the film itself, the music for Chicken Little is passable. Most of it is just generic upbeat noise, the kind heard in most light-hearted family films. It sits comfortably in the background, serving as fodder to go behind the dialogue and visuals. However, it does occasionally stand out when it wants to support the sci-fi sequences by using spooky theremin and thumping drums. The original music is great at enhancing the alien action, but for the most part, it's pretty unnoticeable. I'm going to give two points to the music. To conclude, Chicken Little has an unnecessary mean-spirited tone, weak animation, and some painfully unfunny comedy. But I wouldn't say that I hated it. The friendship between Chicken Little and his friends is charming, and the sci-fi aspect is pretty cool. I know some of you may have wanted me to get really angry at this movie, but to be honest, I don't think it's worth it. It's bad, but it's not remarkably bad. I think my experience from watching Rudolph the movie made it less shocking and frustrating than it could have been. Chicken Little has gained 12 points, which translates to two and a quarter feathered strawberries out of five. If you enjoyed such films as Rudolph the movie or Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius, then I think you might like this film. I've been Jambreaky and I hope you enjoyed my review. Feel free to support me on my Patreon. In the next episode of Jambreaky Reviews, I'm going to review Monkey King, the hero. Cheerio, folks.